Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us this evening. We're going to have a conversation with Dr. Linda Marban. She's president, CEO, and director of Capricor Therapeutics. And she's joining us on the program this evening to talk about some new data reporting 100% survival in critical COVID-19 patients that were treated with her team's off-the-shelf cardiac cell therapy, CAP-1002. Welcome to the program, Dr. Linda Marban. How have you been? Thanks for Thank you us. so much. I did uh, mention, of course, you're, you're president, CEO, and director of uh, Capricor uh, Therapeutics. What's a little bit about your professional background and what was it that led you to Capricor? Yeah, so I'm a PhD bench scientist by training. I have a PhD in cardiovascular physiology, which I got uh, from Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, and then did my follow-up training at Cleveland Clinic and ultimately ended up uh, at Johns Hopkins University working on cardiac muscle physiology. Uh, While I certainly had an opportunity to train at some of these fantastic places of academic medicine, um, my heart was really in the process of drug development. I wanted to take what I learned at the bench and uh, bring it to therapeutics, uh, sort of the colloquial bench to bedside approach. Um, And so um, once I was a junior faculty at Johns Hopkins, I had an opportunity to jump off into the then new biotechnology space uh, where I worked in a gene therapy company uh, for a few years. Mm -hmm. And then um, actually the Capricor story is an interesting one. Uh, We were at a meeting on the Isle of Capri uh, Mm -hmm. where we uh, discovered these cells that looked like they were potentially regenerative to cardiac muscle. And uh, once we uh, further investigated them, we found that they, in fact, had tremendous properties as a therapeutic. This was the new days of cell therapy. And so we founded the company Capri, as in the Isle of Capri, and Mm -hmm. Core for heart. Um, I've been involved with the company since its founding in 2006 and uh, joined um, as CEO, president, and director, which sounds like it has much more power than it does, um, in 2010. What is the, the overreaching mission of the company? I know you, you said what you um, what your goals professionally were and what you've been doing, but what is Capricor's uh, mission? What, what makes you get up in the morning and go to work? Well, first of all, um, I love my job and I love the opportunity to bring uh, therapies to people that are not well, uh, whose lives might be attenuated either in quantity or quality by disease. Um, And so the mission of the company is just that. We develop biologic therapies. These are therapies that are made from uh, materials that are from living items, whether they be proteins or nucleic acids like DNA and RNA um, or exosomes, uh, which are now um, a new signaling molecule that's been identified in cells or using the cells themselves uh, to create therapeutics uh, for diseases. Now, this off-the-shelf cardiac cell therapy, CAP-1002. Let's talk about CAP-1002. Um, is, that's, your, that's your lead asset. How is it administered? How does it work? Yeah, so CAP-1002 is a cell therapy. Um, it's made originally from isolated hearts. So these are hearts that are transplant quality, it means they could be put into a, another person, uh, but they're not able to be used because um, of some technical reason, which happens very much uh, more frequently than one might um, expect given uh, the shortage of of organs for transplant. When we get one of those hearts, we take it back to our lab and we isolate out through proprietary methods, the cell of interest, um, and that's called the cardiosphere derived cell. And that is the foundation of CAP-1002. CAP-1002 is infused uh, using a straight intravenous delivery. So it's nice and easy for patients. Our patients Um, If they're inpatient, uh, they just get it put in with a line that's probably already in their body. Mm -hmm. Or if they come into a clinic because they're out and about, um, it's a 30-minute infusion uh, that allows them to get up and go home pretty much right afterwards. Um, And in our COVID patients, uh, we're treating them once, sometimes twice. Our patients have gotten better, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we haven't had to treat them more often. And our Duchenne muscular dystrophy program, where we've just announced very positive data, uh, those kids are in, um, infused four times a year every three months. So um, as far as COVID-19 patients, um, all of the patients uh, recovered using this therapy? So not all have recovered. Um, two had very significant pre-existing uh, conditions. One mm-hmm. of them was found um, after being uh, diagnosed as COVID positive to have um, a very significant underlying infection 
which they are now treating in the hospital, and, and he's making slow but steady progress. Uh, the other patient um, was very, very, very sick, um, and she's actually getting better, but they both are still um, in the ICU, and I believe they're both still intubated. Um, I hadn't checked on them this week. Four are home and out in the community and, um, you know, very um, much back to their lives, which is an absolutely fantastic thing. You, you mentioned Duchenne muscular uh, dystrophy as well, responding to CAP-1002. Yes. How does it work in, in <laughs> muscular dystrophy and in a viral infection as well? Yeah, so this is the most incredible um, sort of marriage of, of uh, therapeutic opportunity that doesn't seem to make sense, but in two minutes, you're going to understand it very clearly. So muscular dystrophy is caused by a mutation in a gene called dystrophin. It's the largest protein in the human body, and it's the protector of cells. So it keeps the cells um, in, its, in their shape and conformation and basically keeps it from day-to-day -day injury. Um, if you want to do so, sort of an anecdotal or, or colloquial analogy, it's like the bumper on your car. You know, we all kind of sometimes will park and hit the bumper of the car behind or in front of us. It doesn't damage anybody's car. If you didn't have the bumper, you would do damage to your car or their car. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what happens in muscular dystrophy. So as the cells break down, there's a lot of inflammation. There's pieces and parts of cells floating around, and there's a terribly um, inflammatory disease. And in fact, the uh, patients actually um, have a lot of implications um, and muscle loss from the inflammation. Okay, now that's Aha, inflammation. COVID-19 is a virus. The virus causes a lot of initial damage. You might want to think of it as the invading army. The virus is the invading army. But sometimes once the local army gets rid of the invading army, the virus, which is, and the local army is your immune system, the, there's then rioting and all kinds of terrible things that might even be worse than the original battle, right? Well, that's what happens in COVID-19, you have this tremendous immune response. We're now calling it a post-inflammatory syndrome, or we're calling it a cytokine storm. That is your body over responding to, to the viral um, damage that was done. So in some patients, the virus is gone. They're testing negative and they're still dying. Um, and that's because of this inflammatory response. So the, sh the long answer to your quick question is that diseases of inflammation respond to CAP-1002. CAP-1002 is an immunomodulatory type of therapeutic, which calms down inflammation and then allows repair to happen to tissues and organs. Um, and that's what's happening in muscular dystrophy and in late stage COVID-19. How are you getting the word out? I know you're, you're with me today. Um, are you involved in, in other awareness campaigns, especially now when we are um, in panic mode, <laughs> trying to find yeah. solutions. Right. So we are uh, working with the FDA. We just got approval to do something called an expanded access program. So we'll be able to treat more patients with the cells. Uh, we're working with some of the finest hospitals in the United States, letting them know that we have this opportunity to treat with the cells. And we really are trying uh, to get the word out. We actually have requests coming in from patients and families all the time. In fact, sometimes even my personal social media will get, um, you know, some patient who, who writes and says, you know, my husband is dying or my wife is very sick. We try and get to those people as quickly as we can. Sadly, um, in many situations, the ability to treat people because we have to meet all the regulatory requirements um, is slower than, than is possible for some, for some people. But we are, we are working to get it out there, so please uh, do your best to talk about us. Great. We will. We will do our best. Uh, what's next for, for Capricor? So we have a multi-pronged uh, development approach for COVID-19. We are working uh, diligently on using our cell, uh, CAP-1002, uh, for the treatment of severe and critical COVID-19. Um, our next uh, clinical trial or, or clinical program, this expanded access program, we're going to try and get the patients a little earlier in the disease process before they're intubated and on ventilators to see if we can attenuate um, that sort of pretty drastic step of, of having to, you know, breathe for a human being. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's very exciting. And then we aren't uh, talking about it much yet, but I look for data coming soon from our vaccine program. So we're developing a very unique type of vaccine that will be a second generation vaccine that's following behind some of the ones that are currently in people. We believe that those may be less effective than one might want to, 
imagine they will be. And so the one that we're working on encodes uh, four proteins, the four major proteins from coronavirus. It's kind of scary to think that the coronavirus is comprised of four proteins and yet can kill hundreds and thousands, if not millions of people. Um, but we're going to be using all four of the proteins uh, to make this uh, vaccine, which should provide more broad coverage. And we anticipate uh, starting trials with that within the next, uh, let's call it six months. Well, Dr. Marban, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio and giving us this information, especially in this critical time. Thank you so much for having me, and and we look forward to uh, staying in touch. Absolutely. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.